Hi everyone, I'm Pauline, and this is Purely Polly. We're going to talk about the changes to the U.S. food label today. It's important to know that the U.S. food label has not changed since 1993. When we think about that, I think of my own particular wardrobe. Folks, I know since 1993, my wardrobe has undergone many, many changes. Our food label, unfortunately, has not kept up with today's times. So I'd like to talk about some of those changes and why those changes were important. I want to start with the overall reason for the change. Like I've said, the food label has not changed since 1993. Since that time, we have more evidence-based research showing that Americans are deficient in certain vitamins and minerals and we're consuming more of others. We need to know which ones that we should be increasing and which ones that we're now we're doing okay with so it's, we don't need to track them as closely as we once did. Also, the USDA has realized that the food label that they thought was pretty clear and easy to understand in reality was really confusing for a lot of us. And also the print was so small on the one that was printed in 1993 that they now have expanded the font. So those are some other changes. I'd like to start with a basic overall understanding to some of the changes that have taken place. When I look at a food label, the first thing I notice is the font size on the serving sizes and calories has been increased and that it's also in bold print. So that's one of the first things that I notice when I look at the food labels today. Another thing that I notice is that some food labels have a single column and some food labels have a dual column. What do those mean? I'm going to explain all of that to you very shortly and it's important to know why we have dual columns on some food labels. Also when we're looking at a food label, you notice they've added something called added sugar. What's added sugar? I'm going to talk about that too and why that's important. They've increased certain nutrient requirements, they've decreased certain requirements, and some vitamins and minerals have been added to the new label, while some have been taken away. Those are all changes that have happened to the overall label on the U.S. food. I'd like to next talk about serving sizes. When we think about serving sizes pre-1990, consumers ate less of portions than we do today. So our single serving sizes needed to be changed on the food label. And a good example to show you is to illustrate eating a pint of ice cream. When we bought a pint of ice cream before, one pint of ice cream would serve four people. Today, that same pint of ice cream serves three people. Well, what's the difference? The difference is, as Americans, we're eating more ice cream than we used to. So our calories per serving have increased while the servings per container has decreased. So it's important to make note of that when we're looking at a food label. Another thing that they've noticed is when you take, for example, a large family pizza. Eight slice pizza used to serve four people. A family of four would buy a large pizza, everybody got two slices, and that's how they divvied up the pizza. Today as Americans, we have a lot of folks out there eating that entire large eight slice pizza. So it's important for them to know how many calories they're consuming. That dual column is so important because that dual column tells us when we look at the label that for one serving, this is how many calories I'm eating. But if I eat the entire package or the entire pizza, the entire pint of ice cream, this is how much I'm consuming of calories, of fats, of sodium, the overall everything. So that dual column tells me if I eat a single serving size, this is what I'm eating. But if I eat the entire package, this is how much I'm eating. And that's why it's important to know that those dual columns exist. Next, let's talk about the fats on the food label. One thing that has increased on the daily intakes is the amount of fats that Americans are allowed to eat. Woohoo! We get excited about that, right? We need to remember, while we should be having more fat, it's the type of fat that we should be consuming that's important. So not as much bacon as you think, folks. 
What I'm talking about here is we want to make sure when we look at that food label, it's going to say total fats. And then it's going to say saturated fats. And then it's going to say trans fats. We always want trans fat to be zero. If you take anything away from this video today, please, trans fats need to be zero. They are manufactured fats and they are not healthy for our body. We can't break them down. Do not eat trans fat. The next thing you want to note are saturated fats. We want to keep our sat fats low and we want to make sure that we're increasing the polyunsaturated fats or monounsaturated fats. And those will appear on a food label as well. An easy way to remember that we're eating a low fat food product is we want three grams of fat for every 100 servings. When we look at this food label, we see that there are 230 calories per serving. So what that tells me is if I want three grams of fat for every 100 calories, I want to be eating about seven grams of fat. And when we do the math for this, this comes out, if you look at the label, it comes out at eight grams of fat. This is not a bad product. I would prefer that it stay around the seven. However, this isn't bad. If this had said 10 grams, then I would ask that we make a better decision about what we're eating, or perhaps throughout the rest of the week, we eat less fat, just to keep everything in balance. But again, three grams to every 100 calories. Super easy way to make sure that we're staying within the fat requirements. Another thing that we wanna look at is our sodium. Sodium has actually decreased because Americans Guys, we are way too hypertensive. We have way too much cardiovascular disease. We have a lot of health concerns going on because of that salt shaker. Put the salt shaker down, reduce the amount of sodium a little bit. Your heart will love you for it. That has decreased on the amount that we should be getting every day. And you'll notice on the food label that the label tells us exactly the percentage of sodium that's in that product. Also things that have changed are vitamin D has increased, our calcium has increased, and the amount of potassium has increased. All of those things we need to make sure we're getting more of as Americans. When you look at the old label, you will see that vitamin A and vitamin C were listed. Those have been removed. They don't have to be on there now. Some manufacturers still put them there, but they're not required to have them there. By law, manufacturers do have to include vitamin D, calcium, potassium. They have to be on the food label. Next, we're gonna look at the line that says added sugar. What in the world is added sugar? How do I keep it straight? Very easy example. Think of an apple. An apple, when you pick it from the tree, is naturally sweet. It has its own sugar that's already included in the apple. So that's going to go in that first line of total sugars. The sugar that is naturally in that apple will be a part of that line. You look at the next line down and it's indented and it says added sugar. That indent tells me that it's going to eventually get added into the total sugars. And what added sugars are is when the apple gets picked, it goes into the truck that goes to the manufacturing plant to be turned into applesauce. The manufacturer at the plant will often add granulated sugar, brown sugar, honey, molasses, or some other form of sweetener. That sugar has been added to the applesauce, and that's the added sugar. When we look at the label, we'll see that there are total sugars is 12. The total added sugar has been 10 grams. So the 10 from the 12 tells me that there are only two grams of natural sugar in this product, but that 10 grams have been added by the manufacturer. That's important for people who need to watch their sugar intake and also their carbohydrates. And if you notice, carbohydrates is something that has been reduced on what the Americans should be consuming. So by reducing the carbohydrates, it is extra important to make sure that they're looking at all of the sugars in that product and how much are added sugars versus natural sugars. So in summary, the food label has changed in that the font is bolder and larger for the serving size and calories. We're wanting to look at our total fats, making sure that trans fat is what number, folks? Right, it's zero. And that our sat fats are low. We're looking at three grams for every 100 calories. We're wanting to make sure that we're checking our recommended daily values, that we're staying within a low sodium percentage. 
we're wanting to double check our added sugars and that we're getting enough calcium, vitamin D, potassium, that we're getting in those vitamins and minerals that our body needs as well. When we're looking at a package of potato chips or a can of pretzels, we're looking at the single serving size and if we have an oops day and we realize before we know it we've eaten the whole can of potato chips, exactly how much of our nutrients that we've eaten by consuming that whole can. So we wanna make sure we're checking the single serving versus the dual serving as well. That's it guys, that's the new USDA food label in a nutshell. I hope this was beneficial. Remember as always to click subscribe, ring the bell, and happy holidays.